Welcome to this quick video presentation on the basic concepts of ICD-10 manual mortality coding, which is part of the video series on ICD-10 manual mortality coding. Please consider watching all videos in this series to improve your understanding of ICD-10 manual mortality coding. If you are interested in automated ICD coding, please consider watching the information video on IRIS, a validated automated mortality coding system, also available on the unit for strengthening cause of death data YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Yusuf Hamed and I'm a gynecologist and public health consultant based in Tanzania, but with experience in training coders in many countries. I support ICD-10 manual mortality coding trainings for new and experienced coders and have extensive experience in training doctors to correctly document causes of death on medical certificate of cause of death forms. In this quick video, I will explain some basic concepts on ICD mortality coding that are important for coders and stakeholders engaged in cause of death activities to understand. This video series presents SP rules in a modular way to make each presentation about 15 to 20 minutes in length. We have exercises available on the unit for strengthening cause of death website for you to test your knowledge after completing each module. The first module, this video, presents coding background and the basic concepts. Other videos present SP rule one to through five, SP rules six through eight and modification rules. Please review and watch all videos in this series to develop your understanding and skill in ICD-10 manual mortality coding. Let us review the mortality coding process. This process starts with the international form of medical certificates and guidelines on how to fill it. You can access it in ICD-10, Volume 2, Annex 7, page 203. This is followed by direct coding. The basic coding guidelines can be found in the ICD-10, Volume 2, page 28, Section 3.3. A coder must first understand ICD concepts, rules, and guidelines for mortality coding before starting to code. These concepts and guidelines are described in ICD Volume 2, Section 4, page 31 onwards. Today's presentation will focus on ICD concepts and guidelines. Let's take a closer look at the Medical Certification of Cause of Death, or MCCD for short, and its role in mortality coding. The International Mortality Coding Instructions presuppose that cause of death data have been collected with the WHO International Form of Medical Certificate of Cause of Death, MCCD, and instructions as shown in this slide. Some of you will be familiar to this form. Nevertheless, the presentation will briefly describe the certificate in the next slide. This form was last revised in 2016. If your MCCD form does not look like this, it is possible that your country has not yet adopted it, but it will since it is a WHO standard followed by UN member states. On the WHO international recommended form, you'll see that the medical data section has two parts, part one and two. Part one has four lines for the reporting of causes of death, A to D, and time intervals to the right. Part 
two has section for reporting significant conditions that do not belong in part one, but whose presence contributed to death. The WHO recommended MCCD forms includes additional questions on surgery, autopsy, manner of death, external causes, infant and maternal causes, to remind the cause of death certifier on important details that should be included in the certificate. Remember that international mortality coding instructions presuppose that cause of death data have been collected with this form. If your country has not yet adopted this version, last revised in 2016, it may be in the process of considering or planning for its adoption. Now let's focus on the ICD mortality coding process, which is encircled on this slide. Just for your awareness, this presentation is based on the 2016 volume two ICD-10 version fifth edition available at this website. Examples and numbering in this presentation are the same as those in volume two. In some cases, additional explanatory notes and examples have been added without losing the intended meaning and purpose of the original volume two instructions. This slide shows the official updates to the published volumes of ICD-10 and are available as annual lists of changes. Let's start with some basic coding guidelines with the example of coding fracture, distal end of femur. Start by locating the lead term of the disease or injuries. The lead term is usually a name for the pathological condition for example, here, an injury that caused fracture, distal, end of femur. Then refer to the alphabetical index in ICD-10 volume three and locate the lead term, in this case, fracture in bold text. Make sure you refer to the appropriate section of the alphabetical index section two for the word fracture. Be guided by any notes that appears under the lead term. Before we proceed, it is not worth it in other cases, such as the code for renal, functional, pelvis. You will see a note under that is important to consider for coding purposes. Coming back to coding fracture of the femur, you'll find terms enclosed in parentheses after the lead term. These terms are referred to as non-essential modifiers and do not affect the code number. In this example, there are terms after fracture in parentheses that do not affect the code number. They are all considered and coded as T142. However, all other terms that are listed and indented under the lead term may affect the code number. See here that the indented terms have codes that differ from T142, the code for fracture. You may come across two types of cross-references, which are used to avoid unnecessary duplication of terms in the alphabetical index. A cross-reference C requires the coder to refer to another term, i.e. to an alternate entry to locate the correct code. It is necessary to go to the main term, reference it with a C note to locate the correct code. In the example shown on the screen, you can see that fibula with tibia has a C cross-reference to C fracture tibia. A cross-reference C also directs the coder to refer elsewhere for other additional information that is not indented under the term to which C also is attached. It is not necessary to follow the C also not if the original main term provides the necessary code. In the example on the screen, you can see that phalanx except great toe has a C also cross reference to C also fracture toe S925. 
after you have the code from the index, refer to the tabular list in volume one to verify the code number selected for the condition fractured distal end of femur S724. Be guided by any note that appears. In the tabular list, for example, be guided by any inclusion or exclusion terms under the selected code or under the chapter, block, or category heading. Let's now clarify what the inclusion and exclusion terms are. Includes note, which appears immediately under a three character code title, is used to further define or give examples of the content of the category. They are the condition for which the code is to be used. The terms may be synonyms of the code title or other specified codes. They are not necessarily exhaustive. Additional terms are found only in the alphabetical index. Excludes not, on the other hand, means the condition is classified elsewhere, i.e. tells the code it is not coded here. It is used when two conditions cannot be classified together. Example one, injuries to the knee and lower leg, S80, S89 and burns, T20 to T32 are classified in different places. Two, a congenital heart disease and an acquired heart disease refer to the same organ, heart, but are classified in different areas. Note that for each excluded term in parentheses is a category of subcategory code to which the excluded term should be allocated. Let's review basic coding concepts which you can find in ICD-10 Volume 2, Annex 413. A causal relationship exists if a condition mentioned on the certificate can be caused by another condition mentioned on the certificate. An acceptable causal relationship is founded on epidemiological, medical, and public health considerations. In the example on the left, the death certificate presenting a causal relationship, you can see that line A is due to condition in line B, which in turn is due to the condition in line C, and finally condition in line C is due to that in line D. The example on the right, the death certificate presenting no causal relationship shows a list of medical conditions that have no link or causal relationship from one to the other. Check the instructions in the ICD-10 volume two, section 423 for a list of sequences that are accepted or rejected and refer to the international decision tables for mortality coding for assessing causal relationship between the two codes. Terminal cause of death is the immediate cause of final disease or injury directly causing the death is reported on part one, line A. Sequence refers to two or more conditions entered on successive lines of part one, each condition being an acceptable cause of the one entered on the line above it. If there is more than one cause of death in a line of the certificate, it is possible to have more than one sequence. Duration refers to the time period between the onset, not the time of diagnosis, of the disease or condition at the time of death. This death certificate shows the duration from onset of cirrhosis of the liver and time of death as two years. The duration field should always be filled if known, if not the estimated duration, and if not known at all, should be entered as unknown. A death certificate may contain several sequences of acceptable causal relationship ending with the terminal cause of death. To identify the starting point of the first mentioned sequence, begin with the terminal cause of death in line A, the first mentioned condition on the uppermost line in part one. To identify the first mentioned sequence, first establish whether the first condition listed on the next lower line in part one can cause the terminal cause of death. 
if it cannot, and if there are more conditions on the line, establish whether the second condition listed on this line can cause the terminal cause of death. This is the tentative starting point of the sequence. In this example, pneumonia can be due to hip fracture, and therefore hip fracture is a tentative starting point. Hip fracture can be due to tripping, which is a new tentative starting point. Since there are no causes reported below line 1C, tripping on carpet is the starting point of the first mentioned sequence. The starting point is a condition or event that started the sequence of acceptable causal relationship ending with the terminal cause of death. In a correctly completed death certificate, the condition reported in the lowest used line in part one is the start of the sequence. In the example shown on this slide, the starting point is tripped on a carpet. In this last slide, we will define and explain how to determine the underlying cause of death, which is very important. Underlying cause of death is defined as A, the disease or injury which initiated the chain of morbid events leading directly to death, or B, the circumstances of the accident or violence which produced the fatal injury. The underlying cause of death should be entered on the lowest used line in part one. The underlying cause of death is the condition selected for single cause tabulation, one death, one final underlying cause per person. To prevent death, it is necessary to break the chain of events or to effect a cure at some point to prevent the precipitating cause from operating. Underlying cause is used in statistical tabulation and analysis of mortality data. In this short informational video, we have covered the basic concept in ICD mortality coding. Please review and watch all videos in the series to develop your understanding and skill in ICD-10 manual mortality coding. Additionally, please go to the Unit for Strengthening Cause of Death website to complete coding exercises to test your knowledge. The website is listed here at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for listening to this informational video. I hope it has helped in developing your understanding and skill in ICD-10 manual mortality coding. Thank you and goodbye.